Hey man, Springfield, Ohio is back in the news again. And it's thanks to Vivek. Because I'm going to tell you something. Out of all the people in the political realm right now, Vivek is the 1,000 ton gorilla running around. <clears throat> yeah. Vivek is the one that understands how to keep the narrative straight. He's the one that knows where to go to put apply pressure. Everybody else just bouncing around doing dumb foolishness. Vivek is on his game. And I predict that after Donald Trump wins, Vivek is going to be your first president after him. Yes, sir. Vivek will be president of the United States. You'll be looking back upon this moment five years from now saying, damn, Vivek running. Damn, Vivek kicking they behind. Damn, Vivek is president. Yes, sir. Vivek is a savage. A full on savage. Watch this. Chased by a man with a machete, frightened Springfield, Ohio residents get no help from the police, which we've established that they don't get any help from the police weeks ago because they said they didn't get help from police. Let's see what we have, what they are saying for themselves. There simply are too many mass migrants here in this town, and they're too richly sub. Now, let me pause and stop right here and say this. Now, if you black or brown and you're looking at this, your skin, your flesh is talking to you. Your flesh is looking at this crowd and your flesh is saying, them white folk right there are racist. Especially if you're a liberal black or brown person. Your flesh is talking to you. I want you to understand that's your flesh. That's literally your flesh. The skin on your body talking to you. And what I want you to do is I want you to understand that that flesh don't intend to do right by you. That flesh is the same thing that make you want to drink that alcohol. That flesh is the same thing that make you want to go run around with loose women. That flesh is the same thing make you want to sleep around with men and when you're ladies. Men, when you're a lady. That flesh ain't no good. You understand? Don't listen to that flesh. It's going to lead you down the wrong road. Now, let's take a listen to this and don't listen to your flesh. Just say, hey, man, these is people that need help. And if I was in their situation, what would I say and what would I feel? Subsidize. It's pushing people out of their homes. It's pushing people out of jobs. We have been put down and called racist, not only in print, but also to our faces at city commission meetings. And now we are at a level of desperation. Be a resident of Springfield, Clark County for 61 years. Uh, if our city council and everybody wants to be a part of the solution, I've been sitting right there by the door. I haven't seen a single one of them. Now I must pause right here and let me explain something to you. When these folks sit here and say that they had a point of desperation, good old country folk, what they're saying is the police not helping us. They're chasing us around with machetes. They're killing our animals. They're doing all this. They're doing all that. See, bodies finna start dropping. And I'm gonna be clear. That's why they sent them Haitians there. So that bodies could start dropping. Because they don't give a damn about them people. <clears throat> if they gave a damn about the Haitians, they would have helped the Haitians back at home in Haiti. They don't give a damn about them Haitians. Them people is a sacrifice for their election. Just like those people's cats and dogs in Springfield are sacrifices unto their gods. Those Haitians are sacrifices for, to, for them to win the election. And if you don't see it, may the Lord reveal it. Others to spoke to Ramaswamy about city services unable to keep up with the increased demand, including one mother who said police didn't show up for her daughter. She was chased by a man with a machete on her way to work, called the police. She told them what had happened and wanted to file a report. Two hours later, the police still had not called her back and never checked on the crime. So that's how you know there's no crime in Springfield because no one's reporting it. Ramaswamy, an Ohio native, met with Springfield city officials as well as Haitian community members before the town hall. Initially supposed to be small, we expanded it. Turns out, in a venue capacity of a few hundred people, it was about 2,000 RSVPs. People were just hungry to have their voices heard. They've been told to basically shut up, sit down, do as you're told. You gotta love Vivek, man. Vivek is the future of the Republican Party. 
And if people don't understand that, they are dummies. Hold for too long. And I think people were just hungry to be heard. I think the residents tonight actually had a lot of good, pragmatic ideas if people are just willing to actually listen to them. And I think we tried to do that tonight. Listen, let's keep it real. <clears throat> if they don't do something about these Haitians, and this ain't the only city they're in, to be clear, they don't drop them off all over the place. If they don't do something about this, it's going to be chopper style. And that, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be chopper style. You can, you can, like my boy Beanie Siegel said, you can feel it in the air. You can feel it in the air. And see, what, what worries me is that when you start chopper styling one of them in one city, the rest of them feel like they're under threat and they need to chop a style everybody else. And so now it's just chop a style. Chop, chop, chop a style. Everywhere. Chop a style. We want chop, chop. We love chop, chop. We want chop, chop, chop a who? It's everywhere. And I'm going to say this to you. Them Haitians don't understand. They chop a style. And then the rural folk chop a style. It's two different chop a styles. Yeah, yeah. It's two different types of chop a style. Y'all ain't ready for that chopper style. And then, the one, the one thing that worries me the most, it truly worries me. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. The one that worries me the most is this. You've seen that the CIA and the FBI have been able to wind up toy soldiers to go after the President of the United States. We've seen this, right? Dude sitting in the bushes, chopper, chopper, trying to hit him. How much more easier would it be for them to wind up some real racist, I mean, a legit racist white dude who's a CI of theirs and have him go and literally tie a rope around somebody's neck and hang him from a tree? And do you know the type of bullshit that would pop off if they just did that? Nah, let's be let's be real. It would be one of the Haitians. It would be designed to carve away the black vote and minority vote from Republicans. And what scares me is I don't think these people see <clears throat> this coming down the pipeline. I don't think they even see the potential for it as the Republican Party. Because quite frankly, I don't really think they know how to think like evil people think. They don't think like Democrats. Democrats is fucking evil. So... Something got to be done about this. Because either it's going to be chopper style, naturally, or they're going to force it to chopper style. And you got to understand, from a Civil War perspective, if I'm a Democrat and I'm sitting in the war room, I'm like, yeah, we're going to get them to fight this Civil War. I'm slobbing at the mouth, going crazy. I want them to fight this Civil War. I want blood. Bring me all the children. Let's destroy them all. How do we get them? I would say, yes, we bring in the migrants and then we get people to identify with the migrants saying that they're all people of color. We're all the same. We get them to identify. Then we sacrifice one of the migrants. Yes, and then they all identify and say, we must defend our people. And now they go against the rural people and the rural people against the urban people. Yes, we have destruction. That's all I'm saying. Chopper style, chop, chop, chopper style, chopper style.